Uh, welcome to Focus here on France 24. Now, it's been a year of uh, demonstrations, violence and even revolution. I'm talking, of course, about the Arab world, where eyes remain firmly fixed on, obviously, Libya, but also Yemen, Syria and others. For Israel, it puts them in a difficult position, with the prospect of free and fair elections in many countries not necessarily seeming like a positive thing. On the one hand, Israelis are happy to see authoritarian regimes come to an end, but there's a certain anxiety over what might replace them. Gallagher Fenwick has this report. Israel is paying close attention to the Arab revolutions and feels divided over them. On the street, but also in the ranks of the Knesset, many express a combination of fear and hope over the recent events in the region. Einat Wilf is part of Ehud Barak's centrist new party. She thinks her country needs to be cautious. If if this goes in a dangerous direction, then of course what we need to make are more military plans and how we strengthen ourselves against strengthen our southern borders, which, which we didn't do in years. Uh, we will need to uh, secure our alliances with the United States, with Europe. At the Jerusalem Post, the situation in Libya is on the front page. Herb Kanan, the paper's diplomatic correspondent, explains why his readers aren't overly enthusiastic about the prospect of free elections in neighboring countries. We've had experience with this in the past, right? The Palestinian Authority had a democratic elections, right? And those elections, Hamas won, right? And that wasn't exactly great for us. So I think that experience is very much on the back of people's minds, right? Uh, you know, it, 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 to say that you have an election and everything is solved, that's something that Israelis, to a certain degree, I think, burn by. Meanwhile, Palestinians are also keen to emulate their Arab counterparts, but in a different way. In this protest at a checkpoint, everyone agrees that ending the occupation is a higher priority than questioning the legitimacy of the Palestinian Authority. In Palestine, it's something different because we want to put an end for the occupation. We want to start an occupation and we want to put an end for the internal division. This is the speciality of the Palestinian cause. I think the issue is that we as people, as Palestinian people, want to have our normal life, a real democracy where we can elect our leaders, uh, 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 have them account accountable to towards us. This is what we want and this is cannot be again under occupation. Israeli authorities are clearly preparing for many scenarios. They're waiting to see what stance those who come to power in the region will take on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and other issues. Well, joining me live uh, now from Tel Aviv is Oren Kessler. He's Arab affairs correspondent uh, for the Jerusalem Post. Thanks very much for uh, speaking to us. So um, these revolutions, something for Israelis to fear or are they uh, hope for the future? I think it depends which, which country you're, you're looking at. I think in Libya, um, Israelis share the concerns of, of much of the Western world about continued bloodshed, uh, about the descent into civil war, about uh, disruptions to uh, the world economy. But I think in Egypt, they feel there's a much, uh, a much more direct impact on, on their own security, on their own lives. And presumably you're talking about the, the Muslim Brotherhood there. I think there's, there's a consensus in Israel that, um, that the, this referendum vote was, a bit, was, was too little too early. Um, the, the democratic reforms didn't go far enough, and they were implemented, and they were and they were far too rushed. I mean, the only the only really well organized factions in Egypt are, are uh, the deposed president Hosni Mubarak's uh, National Democratic Party and the Muslim Brotherhood. So I think there is concern in Israel about an emboldened uh, brotherhood and that, what that would mean for Israel. And why are people so afraid? I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood are, are not really seen as a, a radical group, are they? I think that uh, that depends who you ask, and I think that that would also depend who you ask in the Brotherhood. They've they've um, expressed themselves in several different ways about how they would uh, treat the peace treaty with Israel. Um, so I think there, I've, I've I've heard estimates that they could win 20 to 40 votes in a free and fair election. Uh, uh, sorry, not votes, but uh, parliamentary seats. So I think the, the the organization hasn't really spoken in one voice, and there's a bit of confusion, almost anxiety in Israel about what exactly uh, their rise would mean for the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel. 
So, in a way, it's, it's not fear of democracy, would you say, but it's a fear of what that means for, for the peace treaties, not just with Egypt, but with other countries as well. I think, in theory, is, is, is Israelis, like many other uh, people in the Western world, are, are in favor of, uh, of democracy. But, of course, the question is, what, what comes next? What comes after Mubarak? Um, Amr, the two leading presidential candidates appear to be Amr Musa and uh, Mohammed El Barade. Uh, Amr Musa has come out uh, has has been very hostile towards Israel and towards towards uh, the U.S. and the West in the past, and there are some real apprehensions about uh, what kind of president he would be. El Barade has been a bit more a bit more moderate, a bit he's considered a bit more of a pragmatist, but uh, but still here in Israel he's seen as uh, sort of conciliatory uh, towards the Iranian nuclear program when he was head of the IAEA. So um, there certainly is apprehension about those two candidates as well. The difficulty is, isn't it, that, that um, for a lot of uh, people in the Arab world, these uh, revolutions or, or demonstrations, depending which country we're talking about, it's, it's a ray of hope for many people, isn't it? And if you're seen as being fearful or, or critical of that, it puts uh, I Israel I in a bad light. It does, and I think that's, that's really the reason that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been very, very sort of, sort of quiet throughout this whole thing. And really the government itself has been, has been quite silent. Um, I don't think the, the, the government, want, Israel wants to be seen as, as on the wrong side of history. On the other hand, it's got practical, pragmatic security concerns that it has to deal with. So it is a bit of a, of a, of a catch-22. So if in Israel's eyes the worst comes to the worst uh, and who Israelis see as, as more radical um, Muslim parties come to power, what do you think the reaction will be from Israel? I think... Uh, I would think it would be a cautious reaction. I think the government has been relatively cautious throughout. I wouldn't also expect the Muslim Brotherhood or any other Islamist organization to annul the peace treaty. I think they're, they're too smart to do that. That would, be, that would be extremely bad for them, for their own PR, if you like. Um, but I would expect to see, or many in Israel, rather, would expect to see a, a sort of downgrading in relations. Perhaps uh, the ambassador removed from Tel Aviv um, or replaced with a lower-level official. Gradual steps that sort of downgrade uh, the relations, or economic relations also, the natural gas trade between Israel and Egypt could be gradually and very subtly and discreetly uh, downgraded. Now, Israel has democracy. Presumably most Israelis would welcome that. Across the Arab world now, a lot of other countries are, are either heading towards democracy or perhaps have the chance to embrace democracy. Israelis should be welcoming that, shouldn't they? Um, it's, it's, a complex, it's a complex question. I... I, I I would agree with you that they should, um, but again, it's, real, it's this question of what comes next, what comes after Mubarak, what comes, we've seen protests in, in, in Syria. Um, Israelis aren't huge, on the whole, huge fans of Assad. They know he's a rather uh, unpleasant guy and a very uh, oppressive dictator, and not only that, he arms Hezbollah and Hamas against Israel. Uh, on the other hand, if he were to fall, what would come next? Um, despite his sort of autocratic nature, Israel... Assad and Israel have been engaged in sort of uh, indirect, discrete talks over the past few years. So it's possible that all of that progress towards a peace agreement uh, would be scuttled if he were to leave. Oren Kessler, I'll have to interrupt you and uh, say thank you very much for joining us. There's Oren Kessler, he's Arab Affairs uh, Correspondent for the Jerusalem Post, uh, Poster, joining us there from Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. And that was uh, today's focus here on France Lanket.